Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel Nature and we are back in Falcon today. I've been doing quite a bit of content on Falcon uh, seeing as they've just released the 2.1 update. Um, today we're going to kind of create a Franken synth of sorts. Um, we're gonna, I'm going to show you a way to kind of utilize uh, the Falcon libraries that you can purchase from UVI uh, to their full extent. Uh, UVI very kindly makes these patches available to you for editing when you open them inside of uh, Falcon and not in UVI workstation. Uh, there's a couple of things that are locked, like the scripting, for example, which is understandable, but they do actually allow you to make use of the waveforms inside of there. And I'm going to show you just an easy way inside of the list view to kind of import those into new patches and create something for yourself out of these sounds. Now, as always, guys, if you enjoy this content, please consider liking and subscribing uh, to the channel. Uh, also hit that notifications button so you are aware of when we put out new content. Uh, so yeah, let's dive in and let's check this out. So if you have ever wanted to take a bit from, let's say, a Waldorf XTK, uh, which I actually used to own, I used to love that synth, uh, combine it with a Jupiter 8 and a Prophet 10. Um, that sounds pretty promising. And there's a way that you can do this if you have some of the libraries from uh, UVI. Now, I've got a Vintage Vault available to me. Uh, so I'm going to be using some of the patches from that to kind of extract these uh, wavetables or waveforms. Uh, they're all multi-sampled waveforms. And bring them into uh, my own patch. Um, now, for the longest time, I didn't actually, uh, I, I kind of went about this in a very sort of weird, long, uh, difficult way, um, because for the most part, I'd kind of do most of my work in the tree view, but I mean, we didn't take a look at the list view. Uh, I always kind of wrote this off as just being uh, the same information that you get here in the inspector, but there's actually a, quite a bit of functionality that you'd be missing out on if you don't use this view uh, when you are programming your own sounds. So um, I'm running Falcon in standalone mode. Uh, I've got, sorry, I'm on a ultra wide screen. So I'll just bring this over a little bit so you can see where the libraries are here. Um, we're going to go to the parts uh, menu. See, I have no parts currently. Uh, we're going to add a new part and this is going to be my patch that we're going to work on now. I'm going to add a second part and this is going to be the uh, imported patch that we're going to work with. Um, so in our second patch, let's just set this to A1 as well, or Omni, just so we can kind of hear what that's playing. Um, let's go dive through some of these presets and try and find something that we want to work with. So let's, uh, let's create like a pad sound. Um, I'm going to just go through some of these patches. Just close that down. So yeah, I've got a patch from the Prophet 10. It's actually two Prophet 5s that are stacked on top of each other. Uh, take a listen to this. Let's grab some headphones. So I quite like these. I'm assuming that's the profit strings will turn off the lower zone. Yeah, okay, I like that as a starting point. Beautiful, warm profit strings. Now I want to get this into our new patch that we're going to be creating and we're going to layer it up with some other synths as well. Maybe something quite contrasting, like I said, like a Waldorf a digital wavetable synth. We'll bring that in on top of this. Um, so we've got our amazing pad. That's this profit one that we've loaded in there. And we can go into the tree view quickly, just take a look at how these are made. You've got the script process, so this is basically running the GUI and everything for this. Um, all the effects that are included in this specific instrument as well. Um, now, as you scroll through th through these, you, you'll see that these um, samples actually change. If we go into the edit view here, uh, you'll see currently we have Profit 10 strings. Um, now, with the script, when you load a new uh, patch or a new sound source we'll go to staccato soft so it's a different sound now you'll see if we jump back into the edit thing it's actually reloaded the samples in these key groups this is due to the scripting that's running behind the scenes um but so what you want to do is just make sure that you have the correct sounds loaded first 
that's the one that we want and now we're going to jump into our list view so i don't want all of this um stuff that's going on here i want to just bring in a oscillator or a science uh, sound source from the p10 into my new patch so if you look on the list view on the left hand side here you've got everything from your parts programs you have a bunch of info there uh, the layers and the key groups are what we are most interested in um, if we just take a look uh, you have two different options. We can bring in an entire layer. There's not much going on here, so that's actually going to probably be our best bet is to bring this in as a layer. Uh, you could choose to actually select all the key groups and bring these in if you wanted to bypass any effects and stuff going on in this, or you could just delete those and then copy it. Um, but you're going to look at this little um, wrench icon that you have here in the layers section. Make sure that you have oscillator one selected. That's where our uh, profit pads are, these strings. And we're just gonna copy that. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna come back to part one, which is our program that we are working on. Um, we will need to just create a new program. And we're gonna copy in a layer, so that's all good. In the layer section, we can now go and paste. And you'll see it's brought in oscillator one from our profit 10 synth and we can now play that back now there's one little thing that you will need to sort out here <clears throat> because of the scripting if we jump back to the profit one um so if you've worked with falcon before you'll know that you have a modulation that has to be set up according to the layers key groups and programs now you'll see all the um adsr envelopes are actually located in the uh program layer here this is not possible without scripting um when you're building your own patches so in our case we're missing out on a few controls um, for example the volume envelopes which normally you would have to do at the key group or pro uh, layer level so if we jump back to our new program uh, what we're going to have to do here is just make sure we have all our samples selected we have 85 samples selected there uh, we can quickly just add a uh, adsr envelope and just drag this to the key group level or the yeah the key group level is what we're going to do um so this one here the master key group gain not the individual layers here this will just change for the samples themselves you want to do this as an overall thing and you'll see now we should have we've got release and we've got attack so that's all working correctly uh, we can also, it'll, you can see as well, we actually brought in the expander filters, uh, some drive, uh, one pole as well. Uh, we can go and edit those, add some modulation to that if you want to. Um, but for now, we're just going to layer up some sounds. So we've got our oscillator one sorted out. Um, let's go find something from something else. So what we're going to do, jump back to our parts. Uh, let's just solo this one. Actually had those both playing at the same time. So yeah, you can notice now that that one is actually just the dry oscillators playing, whereas this one has some reverb from the actual patch. We can copy that across as well if you want, but we'll redo that in this case. Um, so back on our part two, let's overwrite this patch now. We're going to just go look for Wave Runner. I'm going to bring up the Wave Runner Orange and select a pad sound from that. Let's go with something like Macro Choir and just see what we get. Uh, we'll go back to the Macro Choir. Wanted something slightly digital to go with this. Should I just see? Now nah, we'll stick with Mac Require for this layer. So just take a look at this one again. Uh, you'll see this one. We don't actually have um, different layers. Some of them are well. Actually, in this case, we do have a sub here, but that's uh, just a single um, sine wave oscillator. 
some of them work on these uh, more editable GUIs where you have two layers. Uh, some of them, like the Mini Moog, actually has multiple uh, sample layers per oscillator. Um, those are a little bit more difficult to work with. You can bring those in as well. It's just a little bit more complicated to find the parts. You have to actually copy those uh, at key group level. This one's pretty simple. It's all in the patch. There's one layer there, so we can just make sure that we have all of this stuff selected. We can just actually copy the whole layer again. We'll do that and jump back to part one. Come down to our layers and we'll say paste. So there we go. Now we have a Waldorf uh, multi-sample set up along with our profit. Uh, in the tree view or the parts view, I'm just going to mute our Waldorf and come back to our patch that we're busy building. Uh, so once again, you'll notice um, that we now actually have no ADSR assignments um, for that layer. All right, so let's just set up our um, modulation again for this, just a simple on the gain, just add modulation. At key group level, we can do it this way around this time, add in some ADSR. Cool, so now you've got your Waldorf and your Prophet 5 going. Um, you're probably wondering why you do it this way and not just actually layer up. You can actually just layer these in the parts section as well and fine tune the sounds um, in different instruments layered on top of each other. But then you're also layering up all the effects and things. Um, this is quite nice because I can actually treat these oscillators now as a whole and actually do some different things with them as well. So let's take something, for, we'll take one more layer for example and I'm going to jump back to part two. Let's load in a new patch here. Um, let's grab something. Uh, let's take a look. Let's actually take something from the dark light uh, library. And we'll take something like uh, the bells or something, for example. <laughs> Let's uh, unmute this one. So we got some bells from the Fairlight CMI, and we're going to bring that in now as well. Only this time I'm going to do something slightly different with this, and this is why I do things this way and not just layering them up. Um, what we can do is go into our tree view again. Let's just double check what's going on with the structure. Okay, so this patch is just one layer. Uh, only this time, I'm only gonna bring in, uh, I'm gonna bring in C4, I think. Okay, so uh, let's just go and, we'll actually just copy the whole thing initially. So let's go to layers, we'll go copy that one. Uh, jump back to our part one, just make sure that this is muted, there we go. And we're gonna copy that whole bell there in on top of our pads that we currently have. We'll just go paste. So let's go to our tree view now for editing here. And we'll just mute our... So we're gonna have to just do some problem solving here because uh, these ones are now not actually triggering currently. We'll figure that out in just a sec. Most likely got something to do with, ah, there we go, just the expander filter that was on there. Okay. Um, now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna, I'm gonna keep C2, whatever the sample is, or C3 that we have there. I'm actually gonna get rid of all of these key groups. So we have a C there. And what I'm going to do is right click on this one and we'll just go auto extend key ranges. So we have just a single sample now. 
running uh, over the whole section of keys, and that's layered with. Now the beauty of doing it th like this is we can do whatever we want with the sample. So we can now go and say, for instance, turn on our IR cam multi granular for this one. Uh, let's stick on the granular mode and set up some parameters for this. Okay, that's fine for now. Um, so now we have some granular stuff going on here. We'll maybe just push this up a few semitones. And once again, let's just dial in some modulation. We'll just add a modulation source at key group level, ADSR. Let's bring in our other sounds again. Now I'm not going to spend too much time doing too much with this patch. We'll do a few things really quickly. Uh, for instance, on our granular one, let's maybe just add a little bit of modulation to the uh, panning, for instance. We'll just go with an LFO. And maybe we can do some automation on our Waldorf layer. Uh, let's make sure we have batch uh, 61 samples. We'll do the expander filter. Um, let's assign a LFO to our filter at layer level, not key group level because that's going to create polyphonic uh, LFOs. In this case, I want to have a synced uh, random SNH running over all of the keys. Uh, let's just sync that to the clock and we'll dial that into about eight. So that's a unipolar. On this Waldorf layer as well, we'll just add some effects at the layer level. We'll go with, uh, I'm just kind of running through this quickly now. Um, Amp stereo, we'll go with UVI wide. We'll turn this really wide. <laughs> and we can also add some overall effects now as well. Um, Let's just add in a delay and a reverb. Uh, we'll go with dual delay, templates, ping pong. And we'll add in some spark verb. Nice big reverb. Let's try out Boston Spark. And here we go. Here's our Frankensynth creating from a, a Waldorf, a Fairlight CMI, and a Prophet 10.
So obviously you can really go to town. This is a fairly simple patch with uh, just a fair amount of modulation going on. Um, but when you're talking about UVI Vintage Vault, you've got hundreds of thousands of samples to play around with uh, f and such a wide range of incredible keyboards that have been sampled. And that's not to mention the uh, libraries outside. If you have stuff like Drone, you can bring in samples from that as well uh, and utilize these in your own patches. Um, one caveat, though, uh, you will be able to save these as a program in samples. It allows you to save it, but it will actually just save the program. Um, it references the samples uh, to your libraries, but obviously um, uh, you can't uh, distribute these patches unless the user on the other end actually owns um, a copy of UVI Vintage Vault. But yeah, I mean, that's completely, uh, that's pretty obvious. So yeah, that's um, a really cool little trick that you can do if you own some of these libraries. Uh, it's a ton of fun to play around with uh, and you can get really creative with some of these sound sources. Cool. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like I said, uh, if you do enjoy this content, please don't forget to hit the like and uh, subscribe button. Also, uh, give us, um, hit the notifications bell. And uh, if you'd like to drop by the website, go and check out what preset banks and uh, sound libraries we have there at www.marulamusic.com. Hope to see you guys soon. I'll catch you then. Cheers.